Welcome back to the watch list. Why don't we take a look here at First Solar? Uh, the stock is on the move. It is up about 2%. Revenue beat, earnings per share miss. They predict a better year ahead, this company does. Um, some thoughts here. Quint Tatro, Managing Director, Jules Financial. Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent here on Schwab Network. So take a look at this name. Uh, Quint Tatro, I'll start with you. Anything stand out here when it came to First Solar? Yeah, Nicole, first of all, thanks for having me. The forward guidance was exceptional. This is a company that seems to be doing all the right things. They uh, had upside guidance of 13 to $14 a share for full year 2024. If you do the math and they hit those numbers, it gives them a forward multiple of 11. Also, if they hit the revenue numbers, that's a 36% growth rate. Uh, this company is really seeing growth in, in an area where, you know, it's really fallen out of favor. I think that's uh, correlating with today's price action. Yeah, it's still up a couple percentage points, but it was up quite a bit more. But they really had a nice report and uh, seem to project good things going forward in the future. And before I get to Kevin Green, you think that it's an inexpensive stock at this time. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, again, with the forward multiple, the the stock is is very cheap, uh, and and boasts a significant balance sheet, little to no debt, almost two billion dollars in cash. You know, the problem is the next thing you would say is, well, then how much are you buying? And I'm not buying any, <laughs> unfortunately. And this is a great example of making sure that you're in the right areas in the market. And right now solar and these type of names just n are not in favor uh and so th you know it's it's being sold off and and i think ultimately there's going to be a better opportunity to buy a name like this in the future you put it on the watch list right you, no pun intended you put it on the watch list for later and you pick yeah. it up when the trading improves yeah you're you're welcome to say the watch list as many times as you like during this show called the watch list kevin green your thoughts I completely agree. I think with, they have the ability to be able to insulate themselves because of the commercial side of the, the business here. And actually, that has not seen any type of slowing. When we talk about the solar industry, it's really the residential side. We saw this huge spike in the European markets around two years ago. But since we have seen a lot of the uh, input costs, especially for natural gas, starting to move to the downside here, the demand has also fallen off. Now, Nicole, I do think that there's probably a little bit of political risk when it comes to the solar industry because of these tax credits that we have available here in the United States, as well as in China, that might expire or be significantly reduced uh, in, the, in the coming year. And that could actually adjust the demand for uh, you know, solar products uh, in general. So I'm kind of right there with you. I mean, it's a nice company. The, the report was really good. But when you're looking at it from an industry perspective, it seems like it's a little bit difficult to try to get positive fund flows to come into this, uh, into this industry. Thank you for that, Kevin Green. I think you really painted the picture. It sort of was one of these things, hot than not. Um, and we can go through the reasons why not. And, you know, whether it is the rising costs or the economy or subsidies or, you know, lack of interest. And so when you look at First Solar and you compare it to Enphase and Sunrun, um, is this a, a story? Are they all sort of inexpensive or are you just not interested in touching any of these Quintetro? And if yes, does that expand out to other things like EVs and such? So they're not all inexpensive. If you were to look through the valuations of some of these names that you just mentioned, you're not going to find the fundamental attractiveness like you do see in First Solar. Uh, but it's not, it's not, I don't think, a, a question of, you know, where in the space uh, is capital going to flow, that capital is going to have to come out of other areas, right? I mean, you asked Ty about the Magnificent Seven. Unfortunately, he didn't, you know, didn't uh, give give you a lot of color on that, but that's where the money is. Or, you know, the money is in the names that are a proxy for Bitcoin. And I mean, money and capital are, is, is going to flow where it's treated the best. And right now, this is not an area that, that has been you know, treated well. Again, I think our investors at home could, could be watching this. You, you jot this name down and you make, you make a note of it. And when you, you know, sort of you know, track this name and start to see some, some positive momentum, 
uh, I think that's when you can re-enter. I, I don't think you just have to buy it uh, because it's cheap. I think it could be a potentially value trap, and you might be sitting for a long time waiting for some sort of catalyst. They will come around again. They always seem to come around. Maybe it's a political move. Maybe it's a catalyst along those lines. Uh, but this is one that's at the top of my list. Uh, when the solar names heat up again, I, I would jump onto First Solar for sure. Right, right. And look, solar stocks have done well. Enphase was another one to buck the trend. It surged 17 percent. Um, this story is from the 28th as well. That's that's yesterday. But that solar stocks have been on a tough run as interest rates have been higher. And that sort of deterred and put consumers off from from putting those installations into homes, into their companies. And that led to weaker demand. And so, Kevin, I'll leave you with a final thought on interest rates. Maybe that could help solar. I think that's going to be a potential catalyst. I mean, if you actually look at the residential market and the interest rate impact, it's not that big, uh, to say the least. I think it's more of the cost of funding for these companies to be able to go out and execute and create more inventory and then to try to offload that. And since they're not able to offload the inventory in a, uh, you know, a fast manner, to say the least, then they're starting to cut prices, which is in, eating into their margin. So I think that's going to be the, the main catalyst here, as well as continuing to have these tax incentives that are out there that have been very beneficial for a lot of consumers. I mean, in certain states, you can have 50 to 60% of your total cost for solar panels uh, to come uh, right off because of these uh, particular tax credits. I mean, that's a significant benefit for the consumer. All right, thank you both so much. Quint Tatro, Managing Director at Jewel Financial. Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent here on Schwab Network. Thank you both so much for being with me.